Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from New Urban Condition. Today, I'm gonna to show you my haul for October of 2017. First and foremost, I wanna give a shout out to James Starrett. He is part of the Omnibus Collectors Facebook group, and I bought these Mike Grail Green Arrow books from him, collecting the first five volumes. I think there's seven or eight out so far, so I need to get the rest. Thank you very much for the awesome deal, brother, and they came in wonderful shape. I can't wait. It's been years since I've read Longbow Hunters, and honestly, I don't think I made it past issue 10 just because I was collecting other things at the time, like X-Men, that were so much more important and I was on a budget. So it's nice to get them all at once now, and DC is doing such an awesome job collecting these. Um, and these are a little more 80s and late 90s, but I hope to keep going all the way to Chuck Dixon's era. So yeah, I have not read any of this stuff here. Just a few pages. There's some Dan Jurgens art in here. So, yeah. Can't wait to dive into these. Probably go ahead and buy the remaining volumes to kind of have a big readathon. Next up is Anne Nassetti's run on Daredevil. I think this is the last half of her run with John Romita Jr. on the artwork. Collecting issues from the Inferno run. Some of these have been previously released in trade paperback form. Others haven't. So it's nice to have the complete collection without any issues missing. Some Rick Leonardi artwork in there. Her run was either hit or miss by some people. Some people hated it. Some people really, really loved it. I, I, I thought it was pretty good, honestly. So now we have Hulk Epic Collection Volume 2, The Hulk Must Die. Collecting a lot of his early appearances in Tales to Astonish, which later on became The Incredible Hulk. So this collects Tales to Astonish 60 through 96 with some old Jack Kirby kind of layouts, some Stanley stuff. As far as the Silver Age Hulk stuff, I have I have not read any of this, so this will be a first time for me. Unless there was a crossover with the X-Men, uh, this is all new for me. What isn't new and what I will be revisiting is the Green Lantern Kyle Rayner Volume 1. I can't wait to dive into this again. Kyle Rayner, it was sort of my Green Lantern. I was, uh, I didn't get into DC until late in the game. I mean, I was big into Crisis on Infinite Earths and then like Aquaman and things like that. But honestly, what started drawing me more and more to DC were the stupid controversial stories like the death of Superman and Nightfall. I guess I've always been a sucker for heroes that lose their way in one way or another. And I don't think anybody did it as badly as Hal Jordan, at least in the mid 90s. Now these stories are over 20 years old. But if you haven't read them, I'm going to talk just a little bit about them if you want to skip ahead. This is the story where Hal Jordan goes bad after Coast City gets destroyed by the cyborg Superman. He loses it and he tries to resurrect everybody knowing that goes against the Green Lantern Oath. So he goes nuts and starts killing Green Lanterns and starts killing his friends and kills everybody and kills Sinestro, takes all their rings, and takes them into the big lantern to power up and becomes the Parallax. A lot of people said this was out of character. At the time I wasn't reading Green Lantern, so I didn't know any better. It wasn't until years later that I went back and read them. Kyle was really my first taste into the Green Lantern's mythos because those previous three issues, really, I didn't really see much of Hal. And unless he was in a crossover, I really didn't know much about him. It wasn't until years later that I read all the other stuff. I loved Kyle's run. He was new at being a hero, and you kind of related to him. And he wasn't very good at it from time to time. This, of course, is also what started the whole Women in Refrigerators movement by Gail Simone. So, you know, Ron Mars kind of pushed Gail Simone into writing. Speaking of revisiting old friends, More Flash by Mark Wade. This is the time when I started getting big into Flash. Once again, during the 90s, DC started doing all these things like Death of Superman, Nightfall, Emerald Twilight, and Flash had something called Born to Run, which led up to issue 100, and it introduced the character of Impulse, which I really, really liked. This is really the first taste of Mark Wade I had. And then, of course, he knocked it out of the park with Kingdom Come. And this amazing artwork by the late Mike Waringo. I really miss that, guys. You could draw some awesome, cartoony, amazing stuff. It should be up to like eight volumes. I'm surprised they didn't go with the omnibus format in these. Because Mark Wade is such a phenomenal writer. And they didn't take advantage of the big pages for art for Mike Waringo and Salvador La Roca and of course Carlos Pacheco who also does a bunch of villain art. I'm just a little bit ashamed to own this one. This is the Wonder Woman Justice League Volume 2. Not ashamed because it's Wonder Woman but more so because this is what I like to call the extreme era of the DC Universe when all the characters were revamping their costumes to look bigger, better, and more badasser. I mean 
God's sakes, that's booster gold back there. Even the women were changing their costumes to show their other assets. This is around the time that I stopped reading Justice League, so it'll be nice to go back and read these for the first time. Extreme booster gold. And I believe this is also when the spoilers killed ice, but I haven't read any of these issues. Also, other stories I have not read is the Uncle Scrooge Timeless Tales Volume 3 by IDW Publishing. These are the collections of the European comics. Um, I did finish this one, though, in one sitting. I really enjoyed it, I have to say. Uh, volumes 1 and 2 were pretty okay, but this one was awesome because all of his villains team up to take him out of his mansion. And I really enjoyed it. I couldn't stop reading it, so I'm hooked on these now. These were never published in English, so most of these have been translated for the first time. Donald Duck, Secret of Hondorica by Fanagraphics. As you may or may not know, these are published out of order. There's no chronological order and there's no numbering system on these. But this is volume 17 of the Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge collection by Carl Barks. That's what we have so far. We still don't have volumes 1, 2, 3, or 4. I believe they said there was going to be 30-something volumes of these. Carl Barks did a lot. I mean, he created a huge mythos with the Duckbird gang, but he did a lot of stories. This is in my reading list right after I finish reading Transformers. More Transformer goodness. Volume 6 of the IDW Phase 2 is finally here, and it's so good. I read these stories monthly, and I still pick up the collection to reread them again because I love the stories, I love the artwork, I love the colors, and I love, love the characterization of my favorite robots in disguise. It's such an awesome, awesome story. I'm probably repeating myself, but if you have not checked out the IDW Transformer comics, you're really missing out on some of the most fucking amazing comic books out these days. This volume six hardcover collects the Dark Cybertron saga, all 12 issues. And I know there was a previous release of a hardcover that collected Dark Cybertrons one through 12, like back in 2015. But this particular collection also collects the Windblade miniseries, all four issues with that. Next up, we have Low by Rick Remender and Greg Tocchini. This is an image release, so no dust jacket. This is pretty much everything you get. It's a huge book. And I have to say, I've never read this, so I really don't want to flip there towards the end. But Greg Tocchini's always been an amazing artist, so I cannot wait to dive into this either. I've got so much to read this month. October was a huge month. And I went for the DCBS in stock variant cover. All right, let's talk about some Rebirth books from my least favorite to my favorite. First of all, Suicide Squad by Jim Lee. All right, all right. It's not just Jim Lee. It's also Philip Tan and the stories are by Rob Williams. But let's face it, most people like me just bought this because of Jim Lee's art. It was an okay story. I read them before. Uh... Probably won't reread them, I just get them because of the artwork. Here's without the dust jacket, you get some more Jim Lee artwork. I have to say this is the first rebirth title I'm actually disappointed in. Because it's $35 and it only collects nine issues. Suicide Squad Rebirth and Suicide Squad 1 through 8. I'm sure they're really just cashing in on the fact that Jim Lee drew the first few issues so they can price it at however much they want because people like me will buy them. Next up is probably my favorite DC character, Nightwing. This is written by Tim Seeley. This takes place after his Grayson run, which we'll get to in a few minutes. And this is kind of like what the Inside dust jacket without the dust jacket looks like. Also $35, but collects Nightwing Rebirth and Nightwing 1 through 15. Come on, DC, have some consistency in your prices. A few months ago when Wonder Woman came out, I did a video on must read Wonder Woman stories, and this is definitely up there. This is Greg Rucka returning to Wonder Woman, and it is freaking phenomenal just how he's able to take all these stories of Wonder Woman and kind of put them together into one place to retell her origin. Um, so I've already spoken enough about this. What I do have to say about this edition is that the hardcover is collected the way the books were published. So it goes back between her origin and present day story. So I think that's pretty cool. Whereas the trade paperbacks are collected, the even numbers are in one and the odd numbers are the other one. So I have this beautiful dust jacket by Jenny Frizon. And without the dust jacket, we have this beautiful pieces by the beautiful Nicole Scott. Next up is my favorite rebirth title, Superman. 
by Patrick Gleason and Peter J. Tomasi and Doug Mankey. I'll be the first one to admit I was so wrong about this book. I wasn't expecting much, but I ended up reading the story in one freaking day. I loved it. This collects the Superman Rebirth one shot and Superman 1 through 13. It's the story of our Clark Kent from our universe and Lois Lane with her son Jonathan Kent and how he is taking up the mantle of Superman again. I love this story. Maybe it's because it's family oriented. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's a throwback to Darwin Cook stories, to old 90s stories with the Eradicator showing up, some amazing freaking artwork. It's just such a great mix of storytelling. And maybe it's because I really like both of the Bat Sun and Super Sun teaming up. I love this book more than I probably should have. It was such a good and addicting story. I couldn't put the book down. And I can't wait for the second volume. And I hope they collect Super Suns in hardcover as well. I can't believe I'm actually holding Justice League International Omnibus Volume 1 by Keith Giffen and J.M. DeMattis. And this wonderful, wonderful cover, wraparound cover by Kevin McGuire. This is the Justice League that picks up after Crisis on Infinite Earths. And it was such a great mix of comedy and action and drama. And if you've never read them before, I highly, highly recommend them. And if you want to try it out instead of going to Omnibus Way, there's a lot of trade paperbacks of Volume 1 probably being sold to pay for this thing. It's a damn good read. And of course, this is also when the hijinks of Booster Gold and Ted Cord Blue Beetle began. And Batman knocking the shit out of Guy Gardner. Check it out. Omnibus number two for this month was the follow-up to Planet Hulk, and it is World War Hulk. This contains a shit ton of stories. So this collects the entire World War Hulk storyline, all five issues, including the aftermath, including the miniseries, including issues of Iron Man, issues of Heroes for Hire, Avengers, The Initiative. It's a huge book. Thick art by John Romita Jr. And then there's all kinds of other amazing artists throughout this book. A couple videos ago, I did an unboxing of the Akira limited box set. So if you want to see that, go back and watch it. But that's just there for show because it's so pretty. So next up is Grayson. I've never read this and I'm excited to read it. This is Tim Seeley and Tom King's Grayson. It's set in the New 52 universe right after Nightwing ends. So Dick Grayson decides to become a super spy. That's all I really know about it. But apparently it's a damn good read because Tom King... It's now writing Batman, and I really enjoyed his Mr. Miracle. So, can't wait to dive into this and read it for the first time. And the artwork looks real legit, too. Now, I have two people to give a shout-out to. Super Squad D, my boy Tyler, and Gabe Infinity Watch. Gabe, you guys talked me into buying this stupid book I already own in freaking trade paperback form. And this is Volume 1 of Dan Jurgens and John Romita Jr. Thor. These particular stories take place during the Heroes Return, right after the Heroes Reborn when Image bought those titles. It crosses over with Spider-Man and that Juggernaut one-shot, which is okay at most. I'm hoping that these sell enough to get a volume two to finish out the story. This has great artwork by John Romita Jr., Andy Kubert, Stuart Eminen, and I believe Eric, yeah, Eric Larson. Now I've only read the free comic book day and issue one of Secret Empire. So I kind of went in on a blind buy here at 50% off. I don't know if I made the right decision or not. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, that's kind of bland. Flipping through the Secret Empire book, I already noticed some inconsistencies I don't like in my major stories. And that's the art. Seems like we're flipping artists left and right. We got Lionel Yu, we got Steve McNiven, and I don't know. I just kind of wish they would have one artist per main event. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time watching and to hit that like button and tune into our show, which comes out every Thursday. I'd love to know what you guys have picked up, so don't forget to leave comments. Have a great day.